with dogs who are not interested in playing with their owners. This can be a problem because it takes away a huge opportunity of rewarding the dog and of having fun with him and showing him that it's good to be around us and not just for them to go off and do their own thing. Many of those dogs I've been able to successfully teach to play ball and to really enjoy playing with balls. So, if you have a dog who seemingly is not interested in playing with balls, here are some tips for you. First of all, we want to examine why dogs chase balls. Basically, it is just them living out their original predatory instincts of hunting, chasing, killing, and so on. I believe that if we throw a ball like this and it flies through the air and lands in the distance, for some dogs this is too far removed from chasing actual prey to trigger their instinct to chase it. Yeah? So a ball flying through the air and landing at a distance at a standstill looks kind of different from a rabbit running away erratically on the ground. If your dog has in the past shown any kind of interest in motion, in running with other dogs, in chasing wildlife, there's a very good chance that with the right approach you can also get him to enjoy chasing balls by applying this instinct to the balls. One of the biggest mistakes you can do when trying to make your dogs play with toys is to nag them. We do not want our dog to think, oh, here she goes again, when we try and engage them in play. We can actually turn them off from playing by constantly engaging them, constantly showing them the toys and throwing them around. We can create an emotion of apprehension in the dogs and a situation where the dog actually thinks, oh man, I want nothing to do with this, she's always annoying me. Yeah. So instead, we want to make those toys something that's really rare and that they hardly ever get. I would suggest that for a couple days, you take a ball, you put it at a place in your house where your dog cannot reach it, but you frequently are there, for example, into a kitchen cupboard. And then whenever you come by, you just take that ball and you play with it yourself. Look at her. And you try and make this as enticing. I know, right? Yeah, it's super enticing. And exciting as possible. Yeah? So you're like, oh, wow, oh, this is fun, this is fun. You can even roll it a little bit on the ground, but don't let your dog have it. It's really tempting at this point when your dog for the first time ever is like, oh, what is this? I'm interested in the toy to let them have it, but not yet. We want to build up a little more drive and interest in our dogs before they can actually have it. So you get it out and you play with it yourself. You look like you're having the best time ever. And then it goes away into the cupboard where the dog cannot reach it and you go about your day. Once we've done this a couple days, our dog gets super interested every time you are a ball thing. Then it's time to actually start playing with the ball with our dog. And we're not going to make the mistake and make the ball playing far removed from the predatory sequence by just throwing it high up in the air. Instead, we're going to have it on the ground, not leaving the ground and moving as much as an actual prey as possible. So we're going to take our ball, we can move it a little bit erratically on the ground, yeah, and then we're going to bowl it like this. I told him to lie down. So our dogs at first might just follow it with their gaze like he is right now. That's okay, yeah? As long as they do not just turn around and walk away, I'm happy. Following it with their gaze like this is perfect. Shows some interest. Okay, we do this. We don't want to overdo it. 
Or maybe just do it for 30 seconds. Put our balls away. Stop the session. In the meantime, we continue to play with them by ourselves a couple times a day and putting them away without letting the dog have. If you have a dog who is hard to turn onto the ball, yeah? Once the ball is moving, he follows it with his eyes, but he has a really hard time to lock onto it. Yeah, we have to really wave it in his face. I highly recommend getting a ball that squeaks. This way, you can squeak it, the dog will lock eyes with the ball, and then you can bowl the ball. This has helped many dogs that I have worked with. Okay. We make sure he looks at it and we bowl it. Good. And if the dog just kind of slowly chills after it at first, I'm happy with that. We do this once or twice, we end the session. Good. And then you quit while you're ahead. You quit while your dog still is chasing the ball. If you ever go to a point where your dog stops going after the ball, you have gone way too far. Next time, only do two thirds of the length of that session. We can say, as a rule of thumb, that our dog might start the next session with the mindset that he left the last one with. Now, we never want our dog to leave a session with the mindset, man, I was really over this. Yeah, we always want our dog to leave a session with the mindset of, Oh, this was fantastic fun. I want to keep on going. You also want to make sure that you do this at the time of the day when your dog is the liveliest. So if your dog usually has a long nap in the afternoon, this is definitely not the time to try and get him into a new fun activity like playing ball. Yeah? Most dogs are very active in the morning and kind of at nighttime. I call this the happy hour. So you want to use these happy hours to play ball with them, not the times when they're naturally tired. You also want to make sure that they didn't do anything else that's super fun and exerting right before. So I would not let my dogs go and run around with each other and then try and play with them. I want to reserve the time of their maximum energy and maximum interest in playing and running for me. So if they get up in the morning and they're really antsy to go outside, and to play, this is when we play ball. This is not when they get to play with each other. This is not when they get to run around aimlessly. This is when we do something together so I can channel all this energy into interest of playing with me. So, if this is going well, we want to start throwing the ball. And I do not want us to go out on a big field and throw in the grass where there's a lot of friction and our ball will land and not move anymore. I want to throw on the surface and in a way that it will still move a little bit after it has landed to keep on triggering that prey instinct of chasing moving things on the ground. So, like this. Good job. Good. Good job. Your dog has gotten really used to you bowling like this. You could even throw like this, yeah? Just instead of releasing the ball while it's on the ground, you release it while it's in the air and it will still fly a little further. All right, keep on at it. Use the times of the day when your dog has a lot of energy, a lot of interest in playing. Keep on at it. Make the sessions very short and very fun. And hopefully you will soon have a dog who enjoys playing ball. Happy training!